Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to do a follow up on the South Park situation with She Hulk writer Dana Schwartz, who really kicked the beehive a week or so ago. She took to Twitter and uh, decided she was going to throw shade at South Park and its fans, an entire generation of boys who grew up watching South Park and it did not go yeah. as planned. Imagine that if you go on the internet and you give a hot take, like where you're basically accusing a bunch of people who like the show of being toxic men, that you're gonna get backlash. If you troll, you're gonna get backlash, but no, she's innocent and everybody else are the trolls. She is the victim, right? Uh, she gave a very, very hot take. In fact, we've got some other media outlets that are calling her out. Uh, reputable media, media outlets like Reason, we've got National Review calling her out, but she has taken to the Washington Post, which I swear to God, they will they will run anything. She has an op-ed in the Washington Post. I had a friend uh, send it over last night, didn't get a chance to look at it until today. But uh, yeah, she's basically complaining about all the blowback from her very, very hot take. She's mad because people gave her blowback. At, she's mad because she said she got trolled after she was the one who was the troll to start with. She literally trolled a bunch of people and then got it back. And now she's whining that she, she's she been trolled. This happens all the time. Amen. All the time. Uh, the people who start a lot of the issues uh, whether it's whether it's a journalist or somebody saying something incredibly incredibly offensive or stupid on Twitter, then they always use the media to back them up, or they they you know it's like I'm the victim here. It's like no, you you walked up to somebody, slapped them in the face, and then they punched you back. And what, a couple of their friends can punch you back too, and then you said they beat me up for no reason. What did you think Rest was going to happen? It. Yeah, what did you think was going to happen? And now she will probably become a character on South Park. <laughs> I'm sure because that is how- Was that Park, her goal the whole time? Maybe it was. She got attention and now she doesn't know what to do with it. And again, I don't agree with anyone making you know death threats or any anything like that. No, but no. I think she is probably blowing this up out of proportion. And she, at the end of the day, did start it and she kept it going. It wasn't just one tweet. It was like a tirade. Yeah. I, we've gotten, you know, kind of quote unquote threats for just making uh, observations before, um, you know, it, it, so I it, threat, it, you know, it depends on how, what you got, you know? Yeah, I'm sorry, but mean memes mean are not memes. actual threats or somebody telling you to drop dead. That doesn't mean they actually want you dead. They're just I like, wish shut you up. Die. You know, we've heard all of these. Yeah, die in a fire, the whole, the whole thing. So we're going to talk about that. Before we get into it, we're less than 5,000 away from 100,000. Uh, there's a lot of people who don't like us. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna we're going to uh, ask you to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I know a lot of you get annoyed when we ask, so we're gonna ask twice. Please subscribe <laughs> if you <laughs> if you haven't done so already. Uh, YouTube is getting rid of subscribers randomly these days. It's it's so weird. We have people who are like, hey, I subscribed to your channel like six months ago, and now I'm not subscribed. Yeah. So double check. Make sure make sure you're subscribed. Coming from the Washington Post, democracy dies in darkness. This is written by Dana Schwartz herself. It is not bed piece. We're going to read and comment because it sounds like uh, she didn't know what she was getting herself into. I criticized South Park for spawning a generation of trolls, and so the trolls came for me. No kidding. Well, first of all, my next my, this is the first thing Squid King said too. Women watch South Park too. Yep. I mean, what about them? No, it's all just toxic men. Uh, women are never toxic, ever, ever. No, it's it's just not in their DNA. We're going to talk about that because there actually is a woman uh, on National Review who takes her to task. Good. Um, so th this is going to be a pretty long video, guys. All right, by Dana Schwartz. Dana <laughs> Schwartz is an author based in Los Angeles and the creator of the podcast Noble Blood. She's what? also who? I don't know. She's also uh, she's also a writer for the upcoming She Hulk. Disney Plus show. Oh, Can't... notice how she didn't mention that. Yeah, because I wonder if Disney's like, what the hell are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, and we're talking about a, we're talking about twenty five year old cartoon. You know, this is like people who still. I mean, a lot of people forgot South Park was even on the air. Well, now they all are going to watching it, so you know. Disney's probably like, way to go, Dana. Now, because HBO Max is getting South Park, now South Park ratings are going to go through the roof, and people aren't going to watch Disney Plus. Bravo, yeah. bravo. 
About a week ago, I tweeted about a TV show. I was fed up with the way that conversations about politics on the internet. Oh God, here we go. Politics. This is oh, what the whole thing's about. Yep. Her politics. Uh, I was fed up with the way that conversations about politics on the internet often descend into manipulation and mockery. Yeah, you know what? Like stuff like you posted. If you stand for anything online, someone will find a way to tear it in you down. The trolls, the game theorizers, the both sides are equally bl bad cynicism that has spread from the 2016 election into today. Well, I'm sorry, both sides are equally bad, but anyway. <sighs> All of it had a flavor too familiar to me. A TV and comic book writer who spent her middle school years watching Comedy Central 2 at late. Uh, it was the ethos of South Park. Well, wait a minute. Well, I also um, have, as a, am a comic book writer. I also, uh, you know, have seen South Park. I didn't watch as much as you did. You were a comic book creator as well. You watch South Park often. And look what happened to me. I became a troll who started a YouTube and channel. contrary, yeah, that's, <laughs> but contrary to her belief that, you know, this whole thing's about her politics and, and, and what she thinks it should be. Uh, we actually are moderates who uh, lean left, you know, but we are moderates. We're in the middle. We think there's enough insanity on both sides that it needs to stop. And that, you know, we are for, you know, like rights and things like that, but we are not for uh, the extremism we're seeing. Stupidity. Yeah. We're Stupidity. seeing more and more, but automatically they automatically call us alt right and everything else, but the jokes on them because we aren't. Uh, that's okay. She's she's making some very broad generalizations. Well, what what what, else, what else, do you expect anything less? Here we go. In retrospect, it's just poor little me. I was just minding my own business. Oh no! In Insulting people. In retrospect, I typed. It seems impossible to overstate the cultural damage done by South Park. Wait, okay. The show that portrayed earnestness as the only sin and taught that mockery is the ultimate inoculation against criticism. Since its premiere in 97, the animated series has always been gleefully nihilistic in politics, skewering both the left and the right. How dare they? Yeah, how dare they be in the middle? And anyone who believed in anything as equally ridiculous. Oh my God, I can't even read this. It's just... The smart people were those detached enough to know that everyone was full of it, that every election came down to a giant douche versus a turd sandwich, and South Park gets to be the voice of reason for pointing that well, out. You know what? Let's be honest here. <laughs> Both not... parties are pretty much owned by the same people. I mean, let's I know, be. Right? I mean. It's, it's, it is. A, look, the vast majority of Americans at this point are so fed up with politics mm -hmm. that South Park looks like a good viable option, even if it's just to let off steam. Right. And the reason that quote unquote entertainment that's politically driven is failing is because people are so sick to death of it. You cannot go on to Twitter. You cannot go on to different things because if you do, you're going to be preached at constantly whether you agree with it or not doesn't matter um their hot takes are the what are, are what your opinion should be if you don't agree you're a troll on their mind they're trolling that's fine because they have the proper opinion because they're more authority they're the moral authority and you need to listen and we're, we're going to talk about m many instances of this and we're seeing it a lot yeah we we are because this this is actually the uh, journalists out there think that they are the the tastemakers the moral compass for america and you have to listen to them and they can dish it out but they can't take it exactly uh we've seen this time and time again just because you're offended doesn't mean you're right the show declares smugly spewing racial slurs and casual homophobia any <sighs> criticism of the show is cast as hysterical why are you taking it so seriously they're just jokes the show has been on for 25 years but she makes these comments and people are upset because she's basically accusing people who like the show of being toxic men. But why, but you know, why? Maybe they should understand this is your opinion. They shouldn't get offended. They shouldn't have an opinion back because you spoke in. God, this is, this is, now it gets creepy. South Park soo soothes away any self-reflection to protect a worldview that is safely unchanged. Shh, whispers, rubbing your back. Ew. No, no one's better than you. Deep down, everyone is as bad as your own laziest, most selfish impulse. No one's better than you, says the person who got up on a pedestal and told everybody she's better than everybody else. Yeah, pretty much. That's what this whole <laughs> thing is. Her, her political opinions are better than yours. She's right, you need to listen to her. You need to listen to people like her. Man, She-Hulk is gonna be a really fun show, isn't and it? And you know what? Basically, this sums up all I'm seeing anymore in a, it completely. They get up on a pedestal, they spew insults, talk about how they're in the right, they're the moral authority, they're, they are of the virtuous mindset, and then if you don't agree with them, you're this, that, and the other. And then when people are like, wait, that's not true, because, uh, you know, I'll give you these reasons. You're a troll! You're a troll! You disagree with me! Re! Re! Troll! Troll! Meanwhile, they trolled from the beginning! They would Tell me you didn't think you were going to get any other reaction to posting this stuff online. 
Hey, Dana, 2015 is calling. It wants its hot takes back. Thanks. Uh, I wasn't making a particularly novel point. She points out that other people said basically the same thing, even the AV Club. Oh, AV Club. Well, yeah, it we... doesn't surprise me. Oh, look, other media outlets are saying the same thing. South Park raised a generation of trolls shortly before Trump's inauguration. Oh, God. Emily Nussbaum cited South Park in The New Yorker in an article contextualizing Trump's rise to power. But they made fun of Trump. Yeah. They so, made fun of him being president, didn't they? Yes, they make fun of everybody. That's the point. So let me let me get. So you're blaming South Park for Trump now? Apparently. Is that like we're blaming? Because all you. Uh, it's only men that, that are, you know, misogynistic, homophobic trolls that watch South Park. That's it. That's it. all people that watch it, and they're the ones voting Trump. In. So if I'm trying to follow the logic of these, these journalists, right? The, basically, their logic is South Park made the trolls that wound up on 4chan and wound up in Gamergate, and then they wound up voting for Donald Trump. That's basically and now, their argument. And now the country is, is burning itself alive because they don't like Donald Trump. That's, is that is that? Am I right? That's well. Everything comes out of Donald Trump. I mean, yeah, it could be an article about a, an animal shelter, but if it's done by one of these people, somehow at the end it becomes about the dog took a shit in the box, just like Donald Trump takes a shit on America. You know, it, it comes down to <laughs> and I don't like Donald Trump, but I'm just saying, I this really don't. Nuts. I mean, I, I under, I, I, but I'm rational enough to think to know that not everything he does is bad. So I tweeted this casually on my way to work. I wasn't expecting casually. this. Casually. Oh, it was a manifesto. It was, it a, was a manifesto. Oh I wasn't God. expecting the tsunami I unleashed. You wanted the tsunami. You wanted the attention. Notice or you wouldn't sometimes. have tweeted it. I'm sorry. I Look, I look. I know an attention seeker when I see one. And she wanted, she wanted the attention. She wanted backpats and likes and upvotes and retweets for giving uh, her her what she believes to be educated. No, she thinks she had the, the popular the opinion. The moral authority. She wanted to be the moral authority. She wanted to lecture. And you're, again, you're 20 years too late. But you're allowed to be, to, to, you're allowed to have whatever your opinion yes, is. Yes, absolutely. You're allowed to. However, understand that when you make it a comment and you're calling out people specifically, you're going to get crap back. Like you said, you can't walk up to somebody and hit them in the face and not expect them to punch you back. Yeah. We're going to call the police or do something. Bring back, bring back up. You know, it's going to happen. You cannot just you know, spew stuff. Like, I don't like the new she -Ra. We all know this. But that'd be like me saying that anybody who liked any she shows ever were feminist, you know, full of shit that were trying to do this, this, and that other. I've never said that because it's not true. It's not true. A lot of people like Sheer for different reasons, old and new. And, and they're it, allowed to. And they're, they're allowed, allowed to. to. I don't agree with it. I think there's some genders here, but I'm not telling people, calling people names for it. And if I did, I'd get people coming back to me and like telling me I'm full of it. And, you know, and, and, and they were allowed to do so. But, I, you know, there's a limit. Okay, this is where it gets really interesting. And this is where we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about journalism. And we're going to go off on some tangents here, guys. I do apologize. This is going to be a long one. This is going to be long because this is sort of a, this is another one of these situations where it's kind of the unified theory of everything where we can dish it out, but we can't take it. And a lot of the tactics that these people, these uh, armchair activists on Twitter and in the media uh, use, if their adversaries use the same tactics. They call them out. They call them trolls. They call them trolls. But if they use tactics, Gestapo type techniques, uh, it's okay because they're they're doing it on the side of righteousness. It's, right. it's justified. My lunch break, massive. By my lunch break, massive alt right accounts. With, I guarantee you, it wasn't all alt right accounts. Alt right accounts with hundreds of thousands of followers had sick their sicko fans on me, claiming I was trying to cancel South Park. By the time I got home from work, nearly half a dozen videos on YouTube had popped up like poisonous, poisonous mushrooms. Poisonous mushrooms, oh my God. In which men raged that I was a fat, ugly, social justice warrior, liberal snowflake who can take a joke. Well, people shouldn't have been saying she didn't have any, her, her opinion has nothing to do with her appearance. So that better not be the case. Um, poisonous mushrooms. Let me get this straight. You drop poisonous mushrooms on Twitter, you get poisonous <laughs> mushrooms back, and you're and you're pissed about it because everybody who didn't agree with you were clearly alt right people. This is what we're talking about with the media. Every time people have different opinions, they are automatically bullied and labeled in an attempt to uh, somehow dehumanize them and make them less than so that you understand that their, their opinion isn't worth listening to. And that's exactly what she's doing as she's screaming and saying people do the same thing to her and said that because she's ugly, she shouldn't be listened to. Both are wrong. Both things are wrong and neither one should be, uh, should be happening. Uh, okay, so this next paragraph, this is very important because she complains about harassment that bleeds over into the real world. And we know this is a thing. This is a thing. But what gets me about this is a lot of these armchair activists on Twitter participate mm -hmm. in this real world harassment. I have seen it 
in the real world with YouTubers mm -hmm. being doxxed and whatever. Uh, we've seen it with uh, people who were in Comics Gate where they were uh, calling their employers, trying to get them fired. Yep. You know, we've seen this uh, happen in reverse, okay? And a lot of times it was completely unprovoked. Mm -hmm. It was basically they had the wrong opinion, mm -hmm. the wrong political and they opinion. Might not, they, they might not have ever mocked anyone. They might they, they weren't out there calling people fat and ugly just because they didn't agree with them 100%. Uh, they were targeted, and like I said, I never would condone calling someone ugly. That doesn't that doesn't make your opinion better because you're calling them ugly. No, I think you lose your. I mean, at that point, you lose your argument. Like we don't even use the term, you know, social justice warrior. We, we don't. Because there are people, there are people who are legitimately concerned about social causes. That doesn't make them an SJW. Say, like that's what know? I think we're at. We're concerned about social causes, but we aren't to the place where we're out there. You're behaving. religious about it, basically. right? And you know, but calling somebody ugly and fat and stuff like that does not belittle, does not minimize their point any more than saying someone's an alt-right troll and calling them names that way. Both things are wrong. Both things are a tactic to bully someone into trying to get them to agree with you or feel bad. I don't agree with either one of those things. I, I, I'm calling out both sides on that. If you did either one of those, it's crap. Yeah, Sorry. it is crap. But here we go. Um, and this is again, I've I know personally, we know people, uh, friends of ours who have been on the receiving end of this from armchair activists on Twitter. If you've never experienced online trolling, there's not much I can do to describe for you what it's like. In the abstract, it seems like it shouldn't be able to hurt you. In reality, it's hundreds of thousands no, of people. Hundreds of thousands hundred, of people. Hundreds oh of thousands God. of people calling you an idiot. Well, we're gonna talk about some of the news outlets that actually are calling her an idiot too. Uh, calling you an idiot, a bitch, and worse. Well, I've been called those things before. I was told, but I was told I was in, I was internalized misogyny. I internalized misogyny by a man who then turned around and called me uh, foul words in Spanish. Uh, you know, to prove to me that I was a misogynist and he wasn't. You should see the comments that don't get through on our videos. Yeah, we, I'm just you saying. Should, yeah, I'm just you saying. See. Uh, they're tweeting at you faster than you can block them. You'll receive emails, a good chunk of them, death threats. Well, like I said, I wish you'd drop dead isn't a death threat. Nearly all of the rest are vicious anti-Semitic slurs. You'll get notifications that strangers are trying to hack into your personal accounts. People will bombard your employer with complaints to get you fired. Yeah, it sucks, doesn't it? It does suck. All the while, you're implicitly barred from publicly sharing what's happening to you lest people criticize you for whining or making it all up for attention. I don't think she's making it all up. But no, I don't either. When you post hot takes like that on Twitter and you're not mentally... Again, this is like, you know, we talked about before where there are these writers that, that Disney in particular seems to be hiring these screenwriters and directors, whatever, that have very little experience. Mm -hmm. She's one of these. She basically, as far as I know, just had a podcast and wrote a couple of books. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden she's writing She-Hulk for Disney+. Plus. So she is going to have a target on her more so than a lot of people. And I don't think she's used to that kind of attention. If she was just a rando YA novelist or something, nobody would care. And the thing is, like, you know, getting, you know, people trying to hack into your accounts and barge your employee complaints. That we've seen this happen. We've seen this happen in real time. It doesn't it doesn't matter which quote unquote side you're on. It happens on both. And they're right. If you if you call people out for bull crap, you're accused of whining or making up for attention. That is also true. I'm not saying that she's that she's making it up. I don't think it's to the extent that she's saying, but no. I also understand also understand if you don't want this kind of stuff coming at you, maybe not broad brush everyone who likes a show and call them all toxic men maybe not broad brush a show and say everybody who likes this show are all toxic feminists or something like that you of course you're going to get stuff people you know, people are going to come after you if they feel like they're being personally attacked yeah. i don't think it's ever right to behave this way no. ever no and i think i mean she's actually sort of inviting more criticism by using the washington post i agree to, to post like uh, uh i didn't do nothing wrong i just all i did was have an opinion where i called a whole generation of men toxic and, and blamed south park on only men and women watch it too and then they come after me for it and said why you know you're wrong yeah and then you know i'm gonna go to the washington post and whine about how i'm a victim you you you're this is not a victimless crime here you started it yeah, I didn't call for South Park to be canceled. Well, they talk about that. We talk about cancel culture. And the thing is, is these kinds of people, a lot of times when they have the hot takes on Twitter, they are calling for an individual to be canceled or a show to be canceled or something. I mean, they joked about a family guy. They had the one um, where Peter Griffin wound up with a man bun. Yes. And they're like, now she's tweeting and now I'm fired. And now I'm and that's it's, it's become such a joke because up until 
you know, this year from like 2014, 2015 to now, all it took was a couple of people on Twitter bitching about something to end careers. Well, we saw in comics, and, and some of these people that, that had this quote unquote power, I still just didn't understand how, because they didn't make anything. They didn't do anything. They, they did like, nothing, but they were the ones who decided. Hang around conventions, they hang around people who are working in comics with the hope of, of getting a biscuit, but they themselves never actually did anything. But if they have an opinion, then uh, Twitter just stops and listens right. and uh, dog I still can't understand why for some of these people. So I didn't call for it to be canceled. I didn't say I hated the show, but the well, nuance. sounds like you did. Yeah, yeah. I love the show. It just made a generation of toxic men, but I love yeah, it. Yeah, clearly. The nuance of my point didn't matter. Oh, nuance. nuance. No, it was just nuance. nuance. No, nuance. it wasn't nuanced. nuanced. It wasn't nuanced. Painting critics as prudish, finger wagging scolds is the go to defense mechanism for those who subscribe to the show's fragile worldview. As she does the exact same thing. It's all all right and all right accounts who who complained about what she said. Uh, finger wagging. All it's all you all right trolls who complained about me. It's the Potter kettle. Oh my god! That's yep. all. That's, that's the whole point of what we're saying. And we're gonna bring up some uh, legit media outlets, not alt right media outlets, but uh, you know actual. Uh, middle of the road media outlets who oh, the, call you know, the her bad people who do, don't, people. who think everybody's bad need to pick a side because she said so. That's what people? this is about. That the end of the day, that's, that's exactly what this what is about. about. She is mad. If you read her original tweet manifesto, she was pissed that South Park had the platform it had, but instead of picking a side, they just made fun of everyone. And she's like, as if everyone's equally bad. And that's the whole thing because in her mind, everyone is everybody else that they have different opinions than her are bad. Yeah. And and they don't like that. That's what makes South Park great is the fact that it doesn't pick sides. It just kind of you know, says, you know, basically it's pointing out that everybody has issues. Everybody's, you know, has, you know, their biases. And let's make fun of that. Now, truth be told, I am not a fan of South Park. Yeah. Especially not the newer South Park. Yeah, we I think, yeah. I think it's gone way too far. That being said. I understand that that's, that's not, not my sense of humor, but it's other people's sense of humor. And I have never had a problem with people watching it. It's allowed to exist. Just because you don't like something doesn't mean it's not allowed to exist. And it's the fact that it's existed for over two decades, you know, is a testament to the fact that a lot of people do like South Park because it basically says things that they're not allowed to say. Right. You know, and it does make fun of everybody because, you know, frankly, the world is is and has been for a long time completely effed up. What people you know? don't like is that, it, you know, you think in your head you have the right point of view and then through a joke, maybe you realize, oh, is that how I come across to people? Yeah. And and, and they don't like that. Oh, my God. <laughs> people don't like to look in the mirror. They don't. And that's this is the problem. Dana Schwartz is is working through via the Washington Post. It must be nice to be able to, to write a rebuttal in a major newspaper, mm -hmm. you know, um, but she's she's looking in the mirror. And a lot of what she's accusing uh, the South Park fans of is is behavior she was kind of participating yes, in. Yes, she was doing People it. People like her were participating in. Exactly. She's doing this. She started it by doing everything she's complaining about first. They didn't realize my nuance. Well, maybe some people that, that that replied to you that were just like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, back up the bus here. I don't think you're right. Here's why. Maybe you missed their nuance and you just labeled everybody alt right accounts. Um, you know? Yeah, they're all trolls, all of them. Every every single one of them. Even even uh, Reason Magazine, even National Review. They're, Anybody they're who doesn't agree too. with her is just a troll. They're trolls too. Uh, the women who wrote those articles, by the way, uh, they have to be the brave victims, the enlightened underdogs under attack by the hectoring anti freedom censors. Well, Potter Kettle. Potter Kettle. Ironically enough, South Park has attempted to reckon with its own nihilism. They talk about an episode where Stan uh, doesn't, yeah, he's criticizing like everything because everything's been ruined for him, which does happen with, you know, those of us who are in the pop culture. Because frankly, we see a lot of weird shit like this go down mm -hmm. and the media and, uh, you know, the armchair activists constantly attacking our escapism. And that's right. what's supposed to be. And that's there what is no escapism anymore. It's just politics on the screen is all that, that 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 they want. And that's what she that was her her biggest criticism. Again, if you read her original uh, Twitter tirade, was that South Park wouldn't pick a side. You know, South Park wouldn't pick a side. That's what she's having a problem with. You're getting old. That was the episode. Offers an important reminder that cynicism can be caustic. Nihilism leads nowhere and changes nothing. When you're the only one who sees the world around you as a mess, you might. You yes. might feel smug. You might feel smug, but you also might end up by yourself. Okay, so wait, 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 wait. So wait. exactly what we've been saying. You're gonna be an incel. If you don't agree with me, you might be an incel. Now, I, I in the previous video, 
I talked about uh, Bounding in the Comics pulled up a bunch of her older tweets, and she has a huge issue with dudes. Just in general, well, she we, talks. Hey, I saw another person who had a huge issue with dudes. Ginger hazing, constantly trolling men. Yeah. Point that out. But look, well, no, but this comment, when you're the only one who sees the world around you is a mess, you might get the, you might get to feel smug. Wait, but she's the one calling it out, saying the world around her is a mess, and there's all these toxic men because of South Park not going the way she wanted it to. And she is the one who smugly pointed this out. I went to her website. She lives with a couple of cats. I just I'm so you might end up living I'm by just, yourself. I'm just putting that out there. I, you know. I, so anyway, this is like again. It must be nice to be able to have the luxury of of using the Washington Post uh, to to try to garner sympathy. Um, but the thing, you know, and we've got, you know, there are some sites that are going for it. Hey, no, no one should get death threats. And I, I, I agree hundred percent, but that's not what she was really saying. She used South Park as another instrument to attack, uh, an entire generation of men. Cause she, she calls has, them straight out. Yeah. She was like, she's like South Park basically ma has made an entire generation of men toxic by simply existing. And people were like, oh, no, hell no. Yeah, it's like, you can't say this because you watch South Park. You're suddenly toxic. And and as it's been brought up many times, it's not just men who watch South Park. Now, let's let's turn this around again. Let's turn this around. Last week, writer Dana Schwartz did something very dangerous for a woman on the internet. It's not just women. She had an opinion. This is not what happened. Who wrote this load? Let me Mary guess. Sue. Which one? I don't I know that know one. Uh, Schwartz knew the risks. She's been targeted by trolls before for such crimes as being critical of Bernie Sanders. Uh, but what, 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 Bernie's not far left enough for her? Is that what she did last week was even more unthinkable. She said South Park was bad. You know what? There are a lot of people who have opinions on YouTube, a lot of people who have opinions on Twitter, and if it's not the right opinion, you will be dogpiled. But here's the thing that makes, that's really funny about the Mary Sue is they have had many articles about how you're allowed to have your opinion as a fan or whatever, as long as it's an opinion they agree with. They didn't like the way the Game of Thrones ended, so it was okay to be a fan. Yeah. But if you dared mention Captain Marvel, you got the manifesto of keep your Captain Marvel hot takes to yourself, men. So I'm like, you know, again, pot or kettle. And I'm so tired of seeing this double standard. If you're a woman, you're protected. You're allowed to make these comments. And if you get trolled, it's because you're a woman. You know, maybe if you don't like something, you know, and other people do, if you don't want to have backlash, just don't say anything. Yeah, or if you say something, just say something offhand. And you don't have to be like, let's go on some 20 tweet tirade. Yeah, you don't have to sit there and say. You know, she, look, I'm not. You know, people are looking like, oh my God, you're victim blame. It's like, no, I've seen how this goes down. This is, this is, you know, people are always, they're playing the moral superiority card on Twitter. And when they get called out, and this has happened before, we, we saw it just the other day with um, uh, the lady who was talking about the Windblade Transformer. Mm -hmm. Well, her account's gone off of Twitter. Like it's gone because she couldn't deal with, and I'm sure very soon you will hear something about how she was harassed off of Twitter mm -hmm. because she was calling for Hasbro to boycott this boobalicious robot toy when the toy design has been floating around for almost two years. And it turns out she actually worked with IDW, so she probably would have known about it, mm -hmm. you know, but she chose to be outraged. Yeah, at the just toy say, I don't like this design. That's all you have to say. But she went on, again, she went on multiple tweets. Uh, Hasbro, how dare you? Called Hasbro well, out, called fans out. I don't called... think she was as bad, though. I don't think she was going out there calling them as, you know, not saying that the whole, that the cause of this toy is a whole generation of toxic men. You no, know? no, 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 no. That, that, that wasn't to the extent. I mean, we see this all the time in video game journalism. We see video game journalists, uh, you know, again, demonizing entire groups of people because they don't like their, you know, beliefs or whatever the deal is. And usually it comes down to the fact that they are old school gamers. Uh, they tend to be dudes, you know, they're not, they're not uh, far left enough. And all of these news outlets will dogpile on gamers. And even the New York Times picks it up. The New York Times picks up. Gamers are bad. Gamers are well, bad. This is, that's not just this, it's like about shows and anything. We keep seeing all the time, the exact same, like Mary Sue and the same old, same old, you can pretty much predict. Um, if you don't like a show like she you're clearly a uh, misogynist. You hate strong women. You don't like Star Wars. You're a misogynist. You hate strong women. You're racist. You're a phobe of some form because you don't agree with their opinion. But that they don't like something, uh, then, oh, that's just okay because that's just, well, every Everybody knows that because I'm a woman. I, I'm allowed to have this opinion. It's like, it's a double standard and a half. And in both cases, there are people that are going out there going half cocked and being ridiculous yeah. and making death threats. And we get death threats and threats all the time. People who don't agree with our opinions on things like she it, it, it's, it's not a one-sided thing, but yet we don't turn around and paint everyone with that broad brush.
crush. No, there are, look, you know, anytime you have any kind of platform or you know, notoriety or whatever, you're gonna attract crazy people. And there are some people out there who are literally just crazy looking for something to go crazy that, on. They just spend all day looking trying to, to find something to be pissed about. Yeah. And you know, it's just, they accuse us of it all the time, but they're the ones doing it too. But I just love how if it's something that they, they think is morally and, and is, is, is superior and is the right thing, uh, these blogs will immediately, you know, white knight for them, everybody who disagrees. Well, it's not for you. Don't watch it then. But if you say the same thing back to them, well, you shouldn't tell me what I can and can't do. You racist, misogynistic troll. I'm going to bully you and belittle you until you change your opinion or until I make everybody else think that you're I, I, you're not human, um, you know, and you're not a good person. They shouldn't listen to you. Yeah. So um, she's getting called out. It's not just the trolls. Then she's going to have to start calling the media trolls, too. She is getting called out by some websites. Here we have Reason.com. Uh, does South Park encourage political apathy and moral superiority? Critics say the long-running satiric cartoon has created a generation of boys. She never said a generation or generation of people. She specifically said boys, a, right. a generation of boys who are smug and disengaged. Uh, most, I'll tell you the truth. Most boys now don't even realize South Park is still on most the air. Most people don't watch it. Most people well, don't. They're going to watch it now. Mecha Streisand effect is yeah. what everybody's been calling it. The Mecha Streisand effect because a lot of people are like, damn, South Park's still on? Well, I got to go watch it now because mm -hmm. hell yeah. So congratulations, Dana. You, you actually blew up the ratings. Uh, so here we go. Last week, the long running and iconoclastic cartoon South Park got dragged yet again, this time for allegedly teaching a generation of boys. It was cooler to be reactionary and contrarian and anyone who criticizes anything is offended. And that's the real problem. Yada, yada. So um, yeah, I love this, though. Uh, far from inoculating moral nihilism and a shallow pox on both your houses mentality, South Park traffics in a smart skepticism toward power in all of its manifestations and provides over two decades worth of lessons on how to be a decent, tolerant, smart, and funny human being despite living in a world that is casually brutal, disgusting, and indifferent to suffering. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I don't know if I go that far either, but I'm just it, clearly a South Park fan, right? It makes fun of <laughs> it makes fun of both sides. It just it basically it just points out, you know. The, the hypocrisy in all of us is basically what it does in, in, in a, a funny some often inappropriate way so yeah in the early days of the show yeah because i remember i mean like are we in a time warp because when the show first came on i remember everybody being like oh my god that's a dirty cartoon that needs to be <laughs> pulled off the it air was so much more tame then dangerous to democracy it was dangerous to democracy according to salon in 1999 it was vile trash uh it was vile trash but uh, back in 2000, Reason said the show was loaded with moral content and taught his then 10 and 12 year old kids. Wow. I wouldn't let my kids know. <laughs> valuable lessons, including it's good to make fun of people who believe stupid things. It's good to make fun of hypocrisy and things that happen in cartoons aren't real. Yeah, exactly. Hypocrisy is hypocrisy. And I think that's what they're pointing out is what they I mean, they don't always do it in the. Uh, nicest way possible, but that's what makes it funny. There's just this movement anymore that even comedians are afraid because you can't be funny anymore. Yeah, well, that's just it. And a lot of the comedians who are saying that are left-leaning or far left. Well, not far. There aren't any funny far left comedians because everything's offensive. But they are. You know, you've got like Jerry Seinfeld and Dave Chappelle and these guys out there who are like, you know, you're not allowed to be funny anymore. You're not. You're not allowed to be funny anymore. Um, I go further and underscore that South Park teaches at least three basic lessons in virtually every episode. The first is that people in authority need to earn our respect. Yeah, guaranteed. The media needs to earn our respect. The second is that cultural, moral, and political diversity is both the real state of nature and can only be sustained through the honest and open discussion about differences. Agree with that. You can't discuss anything anymore. Like, as soon as you try to discuss something, uh, you're, you know, you're called names and you're muted, um... We keep seeing it and seeing it and seeing it. Well, that was her problem. Her problem was South Park won't pick a side. Mm -hmm. Again, that's what you get to the root of it. And uh, South Park won't pick a side. And she's pissed off about that because, again, these kinds of people. OK, I'm not trying to paint everybody with the same brush, but the people who are the armchair activists on Twitter, a lot of them, they see a platform. They see a large following and immediately their their mind goes to how can I use this mm -hmm. platform to push my political beliefs, my moral beliefs, 
Um, and it becomes almost like like evangelism in some form. You know, like I, I believe I'm the moral authority. So if I get a hold of Star Wars or I get a hold of She-Ra or I get a hold of, of this you know, outlet, news outlet or that news this outlet. News, yeah. Then look at all the, the good I can do, all the evangelism. I can do. Mm -hmm. And that's always, I always refer to these people as like the religious left because that's what they're looking to do is to evangelize their beliefs to everybody else. And that she's looking at South Park like, wow, look at this massive platform that hasn't caved. That look what we could do. We could change everybody's minds. We need minds. to belittle it so it caves. Yeah. I'm not looking for cancel culture or, 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 or to be canceled, but I think that I'm going to point out that, you know, they're wrong and maybe they should change it and pick a side. You know, basically, I want them to pick my side because I want them to, because anybody who doesn't believe this is obviously a bad person to start with the, the name calling. And then it blew up in her face. And, you know, I totally believe that that, that, that went the way she said it did. P yeah. People sent threats. People were, you know, were calling her work. I 100% I believe it because we've seen it. We've been on the receiving end more time. Like, we don't we don't whine about it on Twitter. But, you know, you don't get to almost 100,000 YouTube followers without a bunch of crazy and people. And we're small. Yeah, we're a small channel. I mean, I hate to see what some of the other channels get for harassment. Oh God, yeah. I mean, well, I, I know, on either I'm, side. Back channel, I, I know, because I have discussions with other YouTubers, and it, it gets, you know, I mean, you put yourself out there, you you give opinions, right. you get blowback. We I mean, try very happens. hard to stay, um, to stay true to what we believe, and we try to stay... Um, mostly you know neutral and newsy i mean we do have our biases i don't like the new shira we don't like the new star wars uh that kind of stuff but we do try to like say but to be fair you know and try to keep it you know as, as reasonable as we can it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you haven't picked their side you're right the enemy. you're wrong. that's that's a problem and it's really interesting because he points out too he said um since south park aired 97 the country has become vastly more tolerant toward all sorts of marginalized people and causes and no view of the show could miss what science creators wrong when it comes to out groups uh, ranging from immigrants to trans people to Mormons. We may indeed be more vulgar as a society, but we're also generally more tolerant and engaged too. We were. Um, the, way, the way they act on Twitter, they aren't. I mean, I've never seen so much um, intolerance yeah. as I've seen um, because of Twitter. Well, I think, you know, it feels like in a lot of ways that we're going backwards. That's what, you know, we talk about this too. We're like, the stuff that that people are talking about, obsessing about on Twitter, you know, we're like we. This was dealt with decades ago. I know we didn't have this to the extent it is now, and it's funny because what it always comes down to is um, racism is bad unless we're being racist. Yeah. Uh, sexism is bad is bad unless we're the ones being sexist. Right. And and, and we're seeing this trend, and and a lot of people. I don't care what you know, race, gender, sexual orientation you are. A lot of people are tired of it. Yeah. A lot of people are tired of it. I, it's definitely the vast majority of people. I mean, yeah, he goes on to say South Park might not deserve any credit, but it doesn't deserve any of the blame either. And that, that's true. It's like, you know, it's almost it almost feels like the Star Wars sequels. Like we have to bring Palpatine back just so Ray can kill Palpatine. Right. We have to bring all these issues back that were dealt with or at least we, we were dealing with. And we have to throw everything back a couple of decades now, uh, so the current generation can can deal with them. And they can say they're the ones that like. Well, like I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to bring Shira again, but I'm going to. If there was no strong females until Shira. There was no diversity in animation until Shira. All of which is complete absolute lie. There was before, but they're trying to to. to retcon history to make it look like they did something. So they were the heroes. Yeah, they're trying. That's exactly. They're, we're bringing the stuff back. We're bringing. Things like racism and stuff, I and mean, that's never been gone, but like we're bringing it back that it's becoming a more of a problem than it was even seven or eight years ago because we're, we're gonna say that we, we solved it. Because you're allowed to be, you're not allowed to be racist against anybody uh, unless it's white people. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, look, I, and I'm not naive enough to say that this stuff was completely dealt with. It, it, it wasn't. No, it, it wasn't. It feels like we had made uh, more strides in dealing with, with, racism sexism homophobia all of that and and now we've actually gone backwards well people post videos about these like two little boys you know and then they, they think that they look they look alike and one's black and one's white and most people are like oh my gosh see that's what it should be and then there's always people no that's racist and then they're trying to find a reason why that they're there it, it's bad because the white kid's a bad kid i don't know why but i keep seeing it on youtube all or on facebook and stuff all the time yeah, it's like, I, I mean, we're just sitting here scratching our heads. Maybe we are getting old, but we're like, you know what? I 
I don't remember this stuff being as big of a deal in the 80s. Like, you know, I had black friends. I had, I, you know, I spent half my childhood in, in California. I was like, I know some of the classes I was in. I was one of like, you know, five white kids in the class. Um, and I don't remember it ever being this big of a deal. No. You know, we had gay kids in class. We had, um, you know, my mom's best friend. You know, he was gay. I, I grew up around I him. I had relatives and, that were. And I didn't think anything of it. I never thought anything of it. But then in the last, like, five years, all of a sudden, it's like, now we're back in the dark ages I again. Know. It's it like, is. oh, it's 1950 all over again. Yeah, Let's start even over. if it isn't. And, and, and basically, like I said, you're allowed to be sex. You're allowed to be sexist unless, you know, unless you're being sexist against a dude. Then it's okay to be sexist. You're not allowed to be, you have to be colorblind unless it's a certain color. You have to be, and this is ridiculous. It, 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 the definition doesn't change. It doesn't get, come out to be everybody but men. You know, everybody but, you know, straight white men. Everybody but, you know, what? And I'm, I'm calling it out because that's basically what the, the problem is. And I'm sitting here like, should I say this? And I'm like, I really don't care. Because at the end of the day, that's what's coming out to be. And then we have a lot of listeners who aren't straight white or male. And they're basically like, I'm so tired of being, that everybody assumes I'm those things just because I have an opinion they don't like. Yeah. And, you know, why was our women always labeled lumped in with men or you know, misogynists when it comes to disagreeing on something? And nine times out of ten, usually a white woman making, uh, you know, having opinions on behalf of other groups. Right. You know, like, let them speak for themselves. Well, I get a lot of guys trying to say, t tell me that I'm a misogynist because, uh, because you know, I'm internalized misogyny. I don't realize it. And they're here to, to teach me because, you know, they're more feminist than I am. I'm like, do you know what feminism means? No. But I'm just like, at the end of the day, it's stupid. Like, I'm sorry. Being, you know, mean to somebody or having a bias against somebody based on anything involving race, gender, sexual orientation, whatever, is stupid. The way we look at it is, are you cool? Then cool, let's hang. We don't, we don't, you know, are you an asshole? That's what it comes down to for us. Are you cool or you're an asshole? I don't care what color you are. I don't care what race you are. I don't care what gender you are. I don't care who you sleep with. I don't care who you identify as. Don't care. At the end of the day, are you cool? Uh, then let's hang. Are you an asshole? Then kiss my butt. Yeah. You know, I mean, and it is kind of tit for tat sometimes. It's like show respect, get respect. Exactly. And you get people who are incredibly disrespectful but then they they expect to be respected you know that's what she did she did say something that was really really yeah. crappy and then mad that people you know retaliated against it and i don't care if you're somebody who said something really crappy on the other side of it expect retaliation because you can't just broad brush people like that it's not going to work you're going to get issues so here we have national review article written by katherine timpf mm -hmm. uh, not going to i think it's timp i'm not going to assume her gender but south park as a healing mechanism i'm not going to assume her gender assume <laughs> i assume the writer's gender the writer's gender uh, uh catherine Tim. So i'm just, just assumed, yeah, i'm anyway. just assuming anyway anyway because we're having that conversation right now so this is interesting um you know they said in november the show was accused of transphobia in december we have feminist writer and activist linda west attacked the show for overusing a rep lindy west lindy west Attacked for overusing irreverence, claiming their irreverence needs to be deployed strategically wait, and tactfully. Wait. <laughs> and basically, strategic irre irreverence. Strategic irreverence means your strategic your reverence has to be the way we want it to be. It sounds like th this sounds almost like a coordinated attack. It's like in November, this feminist writer said that. In December, this writer said that. In January, this writer said that. Now we got this woman on Twitter. Mm -hmm. It just seems like like they're all sitting around a little table, like nerve like style. Turn. Like like it's Evangelion. They're all sitting around the little table and they're like, you know, instru the irreverence um, instead of the in instrumentality, it's irreverence, you know, it was like, we're going to we're gonna uh, complete the irreverence uh, Well, the reverence here. has to be deployed strategically means it has to be deployed in the way we want it to be deployed. Yeah, that's exactly that's, it. that's what it means. Um, so these critics are correct about one thing. South Park, this is written by a woman, assuming. Mm -hmm. South Park is consistently offensive. It absolutely has gone after every sacred, sacred subject under the sun. Where the critics are wrong, though, is in their contention that it's a bad thing, that this approach has led only to nihilism and cruelty. In fact, I can confidently say that South Park's penchant for unbridled derision has been directly responsible for my own joy and some of the most terrible times of sadness. Make no mistake, South Park is brutal. Mm -hmm. It takes subjects that aren't supposed to be touched at all and handles them roughly. It's true that it's crude and rude and disgusting, even in its treatment of subjects that are supposed to be solemn, spoken of only in polite whispers and polished platitudes. Uh, thing is, though, that's precisely why I think it's great, right. because it's taught me that I can laugh even at life's most 
horrific atrocities, disarming its toughest challenges by demonstrating that even they are not untouchable by the powerful healing, healing forces of humor. Um, it goes on and on and on about, you know, that, yeah, it's brutal, but, you know, it, there's a reason the show's been on for 23 years. Right. You know, and, you know, you know what it is. Like, come on. Like, it's it's almost like, again, these people, what is it with these people who are working in pop culture who don't even know what the hell they're talking about? Because, it doesn't like, matter. the show is 20 freaking plus years old. It doesn't old. matter, because what we're looking at is a bunch of people who work in pop culture and, and, and in media, particularly, using their platforms to try to sway everything to be the way they want it to be. Which is why we're going to bring this up. Yeah, this... I love this. The comments this are beautiful. Uh, Stranger Things will buy her sexuality shouldn't be up to the audience, but the writer is making it up to up to him because honestly, they really haven't said uh, you know which way he leans. They made a comment he doesn't like girls, but it could it, they didn't say it's because he's gay. That actually, they, that a lot of the things have been talked about was because he's been through a traumatic experience, so he was stunted at that age where he isn't interested in girls yet. Um, but it doesn't matter. The author spends this entire article uh, talking about how the audience shouldn't decide, um, but the audience means you too, to the writer. Just because you're on, you write for CBR, doesn't mean that you aren't a fan whose opinion is, a, you know, is, is your opinion, you're putting your opinion above everybody else because you write for CBR. And that's crap. Basically, you're already preemptively telling people that he's gay. If you don't like it, there's a problem with you and fans need to back off because that's the way it's going to be. And if you don't like it, you're the problem. That's what this whole article is about. And the comments on this are yeah. just, beautiful he he calls it queer baiting with uh will we're talking about like a 14 year old kid okay who's been through some shit and he calls it queer baiting and uh even noah schnapp who plays will byers is like i never thought he was gay i just thought he'd been through some stuff and girls really weren't on the top yeah. of his and maybe he'll turn out to be gay and that's and up so to, what? and that's he up does. to the showrunners but my point is this person is already writing an article making saying will byers is gay and the fans don't like it they can suck an egg is basically what he's saying and then if you don't like it you are the problem even though it hasn't even been determined that he is and then the comments this are or maybe people should show less interest in who the young teen boy wants to have sex with yeah. Adults seem pretty interested in who a teenager wants to be with. It's kind of disgusting. What? So, He's a teenage boy. Why are we talking about a sexual life? Why do we talk about Shira and Katra getting together all the time? Right. They're both 16. Based on his age and what he's been through, I look at the line to mean, because he made the line about you, know, you, don't, you don't even like girls. I mean that he's interested in more childlike things. He did not want to grow up. He did not want to grow up. He wanted life to remain as it was, which is why he wanted his play, friends all to ditch play. their girlfriends and play games with him. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, he, it's nothing to do with the nature of sexuality as much as the desire to delay the complications of um, in a life that sexuality wouldn't bring. Um, as usual, as author, and it is, yep. as one track agenda and sees everything through the lens of bias. So don't be biased as I'm sitting here being biased. Uh, this guy, totally agree. As response to trauma, the line is is interesting character development. As an attempt to hint sexuality, it definitely detracts from the show's narrative. He's underage, my God, people. And maybe your site should quit pushing the agenda. It's If it's not up to the audience, guess what? It's not up to you either. Get That's over what it. I'm saying. You're, you yourself wow. are a fan, quote, an audience member. Just because you are writing an article, doesn't there, once again, the mindset is, I'm here, I'm on CBR, it's my platform. I'm going to tell you what to think. And I'm preemptively going to say anybody who doesn't agree with this is somehow a bad person. This, the the writer of this article seems to need to know the sexuality of every character, including children, in order for them to be important within the show. What a sad way to try to enjoy things. Worst writer on the site, which is really saying something. Oh, no, I know one that's worse. Oh, they did a pretty good one the other day. Uh, all his articles are like this. If I was on a desert island alone with him, I think I'd go talk to the coconuts. <laughs> uh, what What's the sexual orientation of a coconut? Uh, well, you, it, he'd have to know, and have to you know, know. And, if you, and if you don't agree with what he decided it was, uh, there's something wrong with you. So many of them have horrid reputations. I, I wish I, we knew who wrote what before we collect because uh, it would save me the trouble. But of course, Comic Book Resources knows this and would never put the byline on the main page. Comic Book Resources is a Tumblr blog. It's a Tumblr blog now. But it's yeah, a dumpster fire. Basically, this whole article is to sit there and tell audiences because, like we saw with fans, you know, they got their they got a say in, in, in Sonic. Can that happen again? I have decided that Will Byers might be gay because of one comment made in the episodes. We're not going to wait and see what the writers do because it might turn out that he is and that's completely fine. But I'm going to sit there and, and, and say that they're queer baiting, that the audience shouldn't get to decide what sexual orientation he is. I should get to decide that because I'm the one with a platform. And and if you, are, if you are out there making comments, you're a bad person preemptively because you're obviously intolerant 
Um, and that's why you're mad about it. Might not not because you know there's no indication of this other than one sentence that could be interpreted different ways. Well, we saw this. We saw this with you know speaking of comics and comic book resources. We saw this with the Comicsgate situation where a group of writers and armchair activists on Twitter decided who was bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, and those bad people they had to go after. And what you had is you had some of these journalists going out there, not just stirring the shit on Twitter, but they would actually go from site to site and they would make sure they, they write. Did. They would write a Comicsgate article on every site to make it look like a bunch of people. But it was the same author. It was the same author. It's not just Comicsgate. It's other topics as yeah. well. I've seen it with She-Ra and some other stuff. It's it's the same people show up writing article after article after article um, because they're using these platforms as, as they're basically saying that they're the tastemakers that they know better than you. And if you don't agree, um, you, you shouldn't be up to you. It's up to me. And it's like, but you remember the audience yourself. So, I mean, sit down because you are, it's not up to you either. And this whole article is about why he's gay because you said so. And everybody should shut up because it's not for the fans. And, and the kicker about all this is these people, you know, who use these platforms to push their political beliefs are usually parasitic. They, they didn't build the platform. Mm -mm. You know, most of them, 99% of them did not build the platform. They're working for a platform that's already been established. Uh, and they're just, like I said, you, you've got these people when you're so obsessed with politics, you're looking around like, what's the biggest platform, the biggest megaphone I can get a hold of? Right, and that's, and, what, that's what it and is. And that's what I'm going to get. And, uh, you know, we see it in a lot of the problems that they have with YouTubers, I think, is the YouTubers basically just start their own thing from scratch. I think 95% of the problem that these people had with Comicsgate, with the comic book people, was that they were trying to circumvent the system because they had a nice little system set up mm -hmm. where the media and the comic book publishers and the tastemakers on Twitter all decided who got to be in comics and who didn't get to be in comics. And same with gaming, same with anime. Yeah. And then you've got YouTubers coming in and sort of you know tossing a hand grenade in that, being like, well, we're just going to yeah. do our own thing. Indiegogos and yeah. things like that. You know, they're getting comic books made with bigger numbers than the ones, you know, outside of the circle of control. Yeah. You can't do that because we're we're the gate. We're the gatekeepers. There's no gatekeepers unless it's us. Gatekeepers are bad. Screw the gatekeepers unless we're the ones doing the gatekeeping. Yeah, that's exactly it. And, and, and we've been saying this. Yeah. And so we're seeing it. So I think what's going on now is there's a little bit of a meltdown. And, and same with uh, Dana Schwartz here, you know, the only reason anybody paid any attention to anything she said was because she's writing for She-Hulk. Mm -hmm. If she wasn't writing for She-Hulk, nobody would give a shit. But since she's writing for She-Hulk, which again, that show sounds like it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. Um, then now, and now it becomes an issue. So, yeah. Got your platform, got your megaphone. Wow, this was a long show. It was, uh, but I think it needs to be said. This is this is just part of a bigger issue, and this is. I think she's way too late to the party. I mean, she would have fit in twenty fifteen perfectly. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, here's the thing. Um, if you are not somebody who can handle criticism, stay off of Twitter. <laughs> I mean, on both sides. Yeah. I yeah. mean, on I, both I agree. sides. I agree. Um, it's not okay to label everyone as you know a caricature of what you think the extremes are because not everybody are those extremes. Are the people out there that are? Yes. Is that everyone? No. Um, if you don't like something, uh, just, you know, they keep saying, don't watch it. That's not for you. I, I haven't watched Birds of Prey and people are mad at me for it. I don't care. I'm not going to watch it because I know it's not a movie I like. I don't have to watch it and give them money just because they tell me I should. Just don't watch it. They don't like South Park. Don't watch it. You know, it's, it, it, you know, and then also do not make you know death threats to people do not troll people call their work i don't care whose side you're on do not do that it's not cool do not go and you know and and do those kind of things and make threats and and you don't need to make fun of someone's appearance you know i don't agree with people all the time but i don't go and, and mock them for their appearance their opinion i might disagree with but their appearance has nothing to do with it so don't call people fat and ugly on both sides uh, don't call them incels don't call them you know whatever because you don't agree with their opinion that yeah it's low-hanging fruit it's like if you can't if you can't uh intelligently debate them with facts uh, that you have to resort to to you know uh, playground name calling. Mm -hmm. I think you've already lost your your argument. I mean, that's my personal opinion. And bullying somebody lost. isn't gonna isn't gonna lessen um, their opinion. Ma no. Naming them, you know, misogynist trolls, you know, racist, calling them ugly, saying they're fat. That's not gonna somehow elevate your opinion because you're name calling them to make to dehumanize them to make yourself you know look like you're you know better than they are, feel better about what you're saying. 
that's not cool ever. I might say somebody should kiss my ass, but I'm not going to sit there and say, you know, they're whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, they're I just, ugly and fat, so their opinion means nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's stupid. You know, uh, what, Winston Churchill. <laughs> A lot of people quote Winston Churchill. He was ugly and fat. Oh, I was going to say, what are you going with uh, No, he's just saying it. In that case, you're not allowed to quote Winston Churchill. Anyway, anyway, I rewrap this one Yeah, up. this was a long one. Okay, so please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.